business you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. Go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code ABOUTANDROID5. And now they offer free domain registration with annual plan subscriptions. Welcome to All About Android, episode 60, recorded on Monday, May 14th, 2012. This is your weekly source for all the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Eileen Rivera. I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Aaron Newcomb. Aaron is still here because <laughs> Jason is still gone. <laughs> and that man is going to be back next week for Jason I miss fans. him. I was just thinking today, I'm, and now I'm not going to be in studio next week, so I'm oh, gonna, we're going to miss oh, each other. We're like going to miss each other. Passing ships in yeah. the night. Exactly. Yeah, sad, yeah. But also, we have Miriam Jury, a senior mobile editor from Engadget. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, everybody. It's Miriam. Oh, don't forget, there's a chat room, too. I meant to tell you that on the pre-show. Remember last I'm time you were on the show? This is the second time you've been on the show. Uh, <laughs> just in case you want to uh, chat with the rest of them. And, uh, boy, you are fresh from Nolens, Fresh from the Big Easy. And I That's have a right. lot of questions to ask you uh, about your experience at CTIA. So, so happy to have you on board today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, we are going to talk CTIA. I have the HTC Evo 4G LTE. Did I say it right? Yeah, I did. Uh, with the with the kickstand, I like it. I know you reviewed this too, uh, Miriam. I read your review. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about Flipboard for the Android. Uh, there's a little leaked version of that, and we got a whole lot more coming up. We're going to have fun on this episode, yes, right? Yes, that's what we decided. We decided we're going to we're going to put a pause on all the patent discussions. We're going to save that for when Jason comes here because that's his favorite topic. <laughs> oh, and he's going to listen to this and go, "It is not." Yeah. My no, it topic. is. He told me he's like he really he enjoys the pet. No, I don't know. <laughs> he but didn't tell you that. We're going to have fun. That's the theme of this episode. Is we're going to have fun with Android today. So all right, fun let's with Android. have fun and mm-hmm. let's go to our news. So CTIA, the big easy, as I mentioned, uh, Miriam just came back from that. I think you just flew in last night, right, Miriam? Yep. All right. Well, lots of Decided talk happening. To enjoy the weekend a little bit, you know. Okay. <laughs> oh, in, in New Orleans, right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. The, the conference ended, what, on Friday? And it started, what, Monday or Tuesday? Uh, or? It, I think it ended the Thursday night, technically. Okay. But, you know, the last day, you all have the stuff to wrap up, things you have to, like, you know, finish off. And, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, Friday, well, really. We got some hardware to talk about later, but um, one of the stories that I that I pulled for this week was just about how AT and T was basically pointing the finger at Google um, about timely updates uh, when AT and T was asked why the carrier takes so long to respond to Android updates. CEO Randall Stevenson responded with, "Quote: Google determines what platform gets the newest releases and when. A lot of times, that's a negotiated arrangement, and that's something we work." at hard uh you know uh, anybody buy it yeah who buys that i don't know who buys no, that not me uh were you there for uh any of the telecoms talking uh, on stage yeah i was uh, we were live blogging it so i was taking pictures at the time um you know it's, that's just blowing a whole bunch of hot air if you ask me uh, i mean it's the carriers are just you know full of bull sorry um <laughs> Basically, is what it boils down to. You know, I, I finally got to meet uh, Ralph de la Vega in person, and he's a really lovely guy. And I think he's kind of like the, the, the positive, the good force at AT&T. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, then there's Randall Stevenson, which is like the, the emperor, the dark force, you know? <laughs> the emperor. And so they're constantly, you know, kind of at it. But um, I don't know. You know, I think that's really, really egregious to say. I I, I I really think they they shouldn't go there. I mean, this is like, this is like basically giving the big finger to Google, mm-hmm. and and they know better because they are in full control of those up of those updates. You know, uh, at least as far as the existing devices. I think that when it comes to 
Nexus-like devices, obviously Google's in charge of those, right? And of mm-hmm. course, they have they have a bit of a point in so far that yes, Google has to, uh, you know, release updates for like when when Ice Cream Sandwich came out in what is it October or whatever. It took a while before it was available for manufacturers to be able to update their devices, obviously, because it takes some time. They don't get it right away. So, I mean, I can see that maybe that's kind of what he was trying to say, but it didn't come out that way. It basically yeah. came out as in the, the final updates for customers that have AT&T phones that run Android are in the hands of Google. No, they're in the hands of AT&T. Right. In fact, it's all this testing they need to do, this this voodoo, voodoo craziness. Because, you know, with their custom software that they run, I mean... All the pre-installed apps and the firmware that doesn't play nice with the standards that are GSM and HSPA+, you end up having to do a lot of testing for that custom mm-hmm. software. Maybe they should leave it stock. I don't know. Yeah. Any other takeaways from the event? Um, I, I heard it was, I mean, in your opinion, I, I heard a few people say it was a little humdrum. I mean, was it exciting at least? Uh, was there any other, uh, I don't know, discussion points uh, of interest well, while you were there? So, you know, we were walked, we walked into this thinking it was going to be a panel yeah. and really what it ended up being like just mostly a panel and some really interesting discussion. Really what it ended up being is like a lot of the four carrier, uh, you know, executives talking about their network mm-hmm. with a specific topic, um, uh, you know, like the, the, the Dan Hesse takeaway was, you know, don't be evil kind of thing. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, uh, it was kind of interesting. But but I did, I, I, it's a lot of, again, it was a lot of hot air, you know. Yeah. Um, I thought that the two, two or three days later, there was a, a Bill Clinton keynote that was, I think, a lot more interesting. But the, 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 there was a roundtable panel thing, and it, it didn't last very long. And that was kind of like the thing that I thought was a little disappointing. And, and they just rehashed what they had done individually on stage before that. Okay. You know, the Kramer was asking questions, but I didn't think they were... Uh, answered very, you know, there wasn't, it wasn't that worthwhile, I think. But I mean, you know, panels don't always work out the way people expect them to. And so. What about the show in general? What about the show in general? I mean, were you, uh, did you discover anything, you know, cool? I mean, just, there's been some phone announcements. The overwhelming feeling that I got from everyone, uh, both the publications, journalists and you know, the exhibitors and everybody I talked to was that it was a very underwhelming show and that perhaps the CTIA is dying. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, honestly, look, I mean, Apple kind of started this trend by pulling away from Macworld. I mean, mm-hmm. the idea is that if you throw your own show like Samsung just did with Galaxy S3, you exactly. have full control of that, right? When Nokia World does Nokia World, it's about them. It's not about other exhibitors. They have full control of the space, the timing, who's there, who attends, everything. And I think that I think more and more uh, manufacturers are going in that direction. I mean, it's amazing to me that Samsung didn't have a single presence at all at CTIA. I was about to ask if they did or not, because they had their presentation uh, the week before on the Thursday. So they they just pulled out completely. Yeah. And when you consider last year in Orlando that they actually had like the launch of the, the three tablets, I mean, like the, the they kind of pushed the concept of the seven, eight point nine and 10 inch tablets uh, mm-hmm. to CTIA at a big booth. And, and you know, so I, I don't know. I think it's um, it's interesting. I think it was a bit of a, of a of a quiet show and a little disappointing for a lot of people in that sense. On the other hand, you know, they weren't any devices to announce. So if they weren't, then, you know, I mean, we got a few announcements, the uh the incredible 4G right. L- LT for for Verizon. We got the uh, the Focus 2 for at and from Samsung. We got a couple of phones for Boost and Virgin, which are rehashes of older devices. And then uh, what else? Uh, Ky- uh, Kyocera had, had a bunch of really cool, uh, you know, oh. low-end devices. Cool because I think, you know, it's interesting to see them come in without a, ter- a carrier tie-in right off the bat. Typically, yeah. they always have something with Sprint. And they just came in with these CDMA phones and didn't really have anything specific planned with them, which okay. was interesting. Hmm. Yeah, see, that's what I had heard, that it was a little yeah. humdrum, uh, and you just confirmed that. I feel I feel like that's been the, the comment you made, that CTIA is kind of dying or getting mm-hmm. you know less mm-hmm. less relevant. I feel like I've heard that for like the past three years or so. Like right. I feel like this is this continuing down, you know, downgrade of CTIA being relevant. Um, and everyone's waiting for the when is the last one going to happen. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised to hear that at all. And, you know, especially once you see Samsung do their own event and other, you know, 
it becomes less about these kind of trade show events and more about a you know coordinated marketing launch, mm-hmm. right? Which it seems like all the carriers yeah. are starting to do, yeah. or I mean, all the hardware manufacturers. All the hardware, doing, not yeah. even not even in phones. I mean, other yeah. hardware manufacturers, same thing. I mean, I mean, I work in storage, and there's like EMC World. There's mm. you know, yeah. Oracle has their big thing, which is all about Oracle, and they oh, shut down San Francisco. It shuts down San Francisco. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> but I mean, but that's what um, I mean. That's the trend right now. Is just have your own event if you're big enough. Have your own event. Draw your own crowd. Do your own marketing control the story to the nth degree and do it that way and i think unfortunately because i think there's obviously more for the consumer or for the audience to have everybody there in one place at one time but yeah. unfortunately you know people tend to go their own route on this so okay yeah. well at least you got a weekend out of it right miriam you got to hang out and stay yeah, in the big easy know, for I a mean- while that was the idea. I mean, it, honestly, I was, it was a lot of sleep and uh, some tasty food. And uh, we had some friends there, so catching up with some friends. But, okay. um, you know, it was, I mean, it wasn't like I went out and did anything too crazy. All right. Um, but, you know, overall, yeah, a little bit a little bit of a disappointment, I think. Uh, I mean, we kind of knew that was going to happen when we reached out to various you know, manufacturers and carriers ahead of time and they just wouldn't give us anything. So then we're like, oh, well, maybe they don't actually don't have anything. And the few things they announced weren't really uh, mind boggling. But when you think about it, I mean, how can you top the launch of the Galaxy S3? Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at this point, all the big phones are out. I mean, all the ones that we're expected, a few of them still are are we expecting like the uh, Sony Ericsson, uh, sorry, Sony Mobile Mm-hmm. Uh, Xperia Ion, we still don't have, don't know where that's at. We we know the uh, Skyrocket HD that was announced at CS has been canceled, so that leaves us with what? Nothing. I mean, the yeah. One X is out, the Evo right. 4G LT is out. You have one, I have one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Galaxy S3 is coming, so that's it. I think we we are probably going to see more phones obviously launched, but I think the big ones for the year are done. Yeah. Yeah, it sure sounds like it. Well, cool. Thank you for letting us know about your impressions at CTIA. I was curious uh, as I was following and not hearing too much, hearing a little bit. Uh, but not too it, much. Honestly, so. like I, I, I noted that it was happening, yeah. and I said, "Okay, let me make sure I keep an eye out." And mm-hmm. then it just kind of, yeah, the week went on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, the for, the, incre- yeah. the Droid Incredible was announced in the early part of the week, yep. and then yeah. after that, I didn't really hear yeah. too much. Hey, you know, sometimes it is, it's all schedules and plannings and, and things yeah. like that. Sometimes, and sometimes, and I got to feel you got to feel for the CTA organizers is that they didn't. There's no juice coming out of it. It wasn't on the tip of our tongues, yeah. and so that's got to stink for them. Um, yeah, but it happens. I mean, I, I work in an industries where. You know, conventions and conferences happen all year round. In some years, there's just, oh, this is an off year. There's yeah. nothing going on. So, yeah. So. Mm. All right. Well, moving on. Well, luckily, Samsung announced the Galaxy S3 <laughs> <laughs> earlier this month. Or we wouldn't have anything to talk about. Um, but um, interesting. When, so when they announced the Galaxy S3 phone um, and they announced the 4.8-inch uh, 720 Super AMOLED display, some people got a little upset. A little, you know, not a lot of big fans of the Super AMOLED displays. Um, at CTIA, actually, there were some uh, the folks at MobileBurn.com got to talk to Samsung and ask them directly about it. And Samsung basically said that the reason why they're using um, the pentile layouts with the Super AMOLED displays is uh, comes out of durability and longevity. Um, and basically, they're saying that they've been um, using AMOLED uh, displays since the Galaxy S in 2010. And they're using it in all their high-end smartphones, and many cons- consumers are fans of them. They say AMOLED screens have um, have tremendous contrast, saturated and vibrant colors, and extremely wide viewing angles. Um, and devices that feature AMOLED displays have a certain wow factor that when you look at them, uh, when you first look at them, um, even if the displays don't provide the most accurate color reproduction, people are still wowed by them. And Samsung believes that AMOLED displays are the best for their mobile device- devices, which is why they use them t- time and time again. I kind of hesitated. I was like, oh, I wish Jason was here because he yeah, talks about Pentile, Pentile all the time. All the time. And he's yeah. actually gotten – he's influenced me. So I see it. I see the difference between a Pentile display yep. and a non-Pentile display. And Even and with the HTC One X that you looked at? I mean, I heard that that was actually – The HTC One X compared to the One S, yeah, there's yep. there's de- there's a definite uh, difference there. It's very slight. Mm-hmm. And most people won't care. Honestly, most people won't care. Yep. Uh, but for those of you it's, who do, who are picky enough, who can see it, uh, it's the, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, the it's, kind of, it's kind of like with the FedEx logo. Once you see that arrow, you can't not see it. <laughs> I think like There's one, an arrow? Yeah. Oh, great. I don't You've know. never seen Chad, the arrow? show me the arrow. <laughs> I don't know the arrow. Jeff, really? Full of, full of a, you've never seen the arrow? The I don't FedEx think I've logo? seen the arrow. Wow. See? Where? Between the E and the X. What? Okay. Well, the if bottom you're watching part of, the video. The bottom part of the E and the left part of the X. Do you see the arrow? It's an arrow. Oh, see that right there? my. <laughs> 
goodness. You never saw that? You've never seen that, really? I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> wow. I didn't think anyone was left that hadn't seen that yet. That's like Thank a little you. Easter egg in the Thank logo. So now that, you see, now that you've seen it, you'll see? never not be able to That's see that hour like ever again. That's like Pentile. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. God, so, all right. <laughs> It's like those games that they have where they're like, stare at this blob. Yeah. And do you see the old lady's face or not? And then you yeah. have to stand and then you can't not see the old lady's <laughs> right. face anymore. That's yeah. the same thing. So, so I don't know. Again, it's not in make or break, but it's interesting that they came out and, you know, said, well, we do this because. And it's really not that bad. But, um, again, some people but, are, are picky about their, their screens what and I what think, they want. What I think is that I can look past the, 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 the basically the problem with the pentile display. Just in, and, and, again, Jason could explain this much better, but it's it has to do with the organization of the pixels uh, mm-hmm. as they make the graphics on your on your screen and pentile displays do it slightly differently and which can sometimes make the colors look a little bit off if you're really looking if you really notice it but what I think is interesting, aside from that, in terms of the 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 color value, the color thing, um, Samsung you know says that it's durability and longevity, and there were tons of problems with the Nexus One where those screens were deteriorating mm-hmm. after a short period of time. So I'm curious what Samsung's doing to make them believe in the longevity of this screen, you know? Right. So um, I, I don't know. It's it's it seems hotly debated, but clearly Samsung has invested in this technology and they're going to stick with it. Right. So. Miriam, you have any thoughts on the? Pentile versus non-pentile I think, I think it's, it's kind of like the the UP, the sorry the FedEx arrow. Yes, if you have <laughs> once you see it, it's hard to unsee it. Yep. Um, but that being said, I said it's the resolution issue, right? The yeah. reason you see a big difference between the One S and the One X is because the One S is a QHD display, mm-hmm. and so it's got bigger pixels and yep. it's pentile. Whereas the One X is 720p, 1280 by 720, so it's HD, many more pixels packed in a very similar space, uh, and it's non-pentile, so you get a double whammo, right? Yep. Now compare a Galaxy Nexus with the which is pentile with the uh, One X, which is non-pentile, and it's getting harder to see because the res is so high. Yeah. But some people will notice, like especially on some color shades, there's some weird dithering happening where you can kind of notice. But again, the higher the resolution, the higher the pixel density, the the least likely you're going to notice this. Uh, so you know you got to kind of see it like. Try it out for yourself. I wouldn't say this is a deciding factor when you're buying when you're buying a phone, unless mm-hmm. you're going for a lower res display. Yeah. So if you're looking at 720p uh, state of the art phones right now, really have a look at them side by side and judge for yourself before you you decide. Oh, I'm not going to buy this because it's pentile because it's kind of mm-hmm. silly, right? Mm-hmm. You might be, uh, you know, putting away a whole bunch of other good features just on this one thing alone which doesn't seem very smart to me anyway yeah. yeah and i think i think the resolution is a great point i mean especially we often get into this when we're talking about televisions and vi- film and video and stuff like that and really and i really wonder and i have no science behind this but i wonder past the point of 720p and 1080p at one how much our eye can actually perceive. <laughs> and if right. you've got a 4.0-inch phone on 720p with that high of a resolution, yeah. you're still seeing it, then good on you. you got some great eyesight. Yeah. I don't know if I well, see it. You know, It's a question of habit too, right? Like now that I stare at the 1X all the time, which is non pentile 720, I'm starting to notice anything worse, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like I can't do... Uh, a 480 by uh, by uh, sorry 800 by 40 display at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it just bugs me, and it's like, if you, have you seen? Did you see the 8K TV at CES? I did not. Uh, I tried. Okay. Well, yeah. Once you see that, there's no going back. I like, know. It's like it I was about to mention 4K and 8K yeah. uh, TV. Yeah. I mean, I'm know, a little so skeptical. I think, I think- yeah. I think there's a lot still to be to be done as far as resolution goes, you know. But the thing is, once you get used to a set uh, a level, it going back down is hard, right? Yeah. yeah. So just be aware of that. So if you've never ever used an HD display like a QHD display, even like the One S, ever, and you want to buy One S, fine. You won't. Yeah, notice. it'll be fine. It's a penta. It'll be. It'll look great. But don't look at it next to the One S. Uh, One X. <laughs> yeah. Because your your mind will be blown, right? And and if you're used to a Galaxy Nexus, which is what I came from when I got the One X, yeah, the One X looks better. And and yeah, going going back to Pentile after that is is a bit is a bit of a weird thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and I guess we can say that because we see a lot of phones and we yeah. review them. But but um, most people they there's they have the one phone and yeah. they, that's what they look at and they get used to it. Similar like with their TV, they mm-hmm. look at you know. So I don't know. But uh, CTIA also gave uh, some folks the opportunity mm-hmm. to get some more hands up, hands on time with the Galaxy S3, and we actually got to see some. 
Were they at CTI? No. Was, uh, I thought it was at CTI. Yes, they was, were. Yeah, they were. Oh, okay, they totally okay, were. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And, um, but we also got to see some, uh, some of the accessories in action, including the C-Pen. Did you see the C-Pen? Miriam? I did not see the okay. C pen, but I did play with the Galaxy S3 quite a bit uh, in private. So yeah, so we've got some video here where you can see the uh, Galaxy S3 C pen in action. It's pretty and, big. And for those who don't know what the C pen is, it's the next generation of the Samsung stylus. I mean, it looks like a it's a it's a hefty pen. It's like a Mont Blanc. Yeah, yeah, so it, it really like nice is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you guys know that for the Galaxy Note, there is a uh, there the is a, an adapter pen that like they call the the S pen. Yeah something right and yeah. you put the regular pen in it and it looks like this kind of design like a mont blanc like design and it's actually significantly better using galaxy note with that ah, okay. than yeah. using uh mm -hmm. the native s pen yep so i like the size even though it's kind of cumbersome personally i would just be af i would just be afraid to lose it but i guess if because i lose all my pens all the time right. but well just don't lose this one. i know yeah. well, it's yeah. like you when you yeah. buy expensive buy sunglasses yep. and then you lose the expensive sunglasses so i buy the, <laughs> you know the cheap from ones from the looks of this and probably the naming is it's a capacitive pen so it's it's yeah. just yeah. a piece of metal at the end it's not never going to be even remotely as precise as the uh, wacom digitizer technology that the s pen uses yep. so i don't know you know to me i really think that one of the things that makes the note so unique and, and then the, the bigger notes as well is that they are a dual digitizer design. They have the capacitive and the S Pen, the, the Wacom um, together. And so that gives you that, that pressure sensitivity, the preciseness, and you'll never just get that with a capacitive um, stylus. Right. So, you know, I mean, we'll see. I think this is a, definitely a differentiator for Samsung. I hope that they know what to do with it. Did you like the uh, Galaxy S3? I mean, as comp I, I'm curious in uh, in terms of comparing to the no or sorry to the One X. The One X, yeah. So you know, I had them side by side with my Galaxy Nexus as well. I had some time. You know, it was quiet. I was just with the Samsung reps in a meeting, and um, I have to say, I was very disappointed when I saw uh, the launch of it. I didn't go to London. I, you know, we have enough people to go around, so mm -hmm. I didn't myself go. It was so mm -hmm. close to CTI, I just didn't want to do the travel and stuff. But Ultimately, I was disappointed about what I saw in pictures. And to me, you know, spec wise, it's pretty much what I was expecting. But mm -hmm. I really don't, too, I'm not too excited yeah. about this whole touch whiz on top of, of, uh, um, Touch whiz on top of, sorry, my phone was ringing, uh, on top of uh, ice cream sandwich. I think they did it wrong. I think uh, mm. uh, um, personally, you see that if you have a Galaxy S2 and you updated to ice cream sandwich, the UI feels like a gingerbread touch whiz UI. Yeah. You lose all the advantages of all the hard work Google put into the user experience of, of ice cream sandwich, which uh, HTC was very smart because with the One Series and the Evo 4G LT, they've maintained the, the look and feel of ice cream sandwich, but added a bit more stuff on top, but not gone overboard like they did with gingerbread, right? So I, would, I was kind of hoping that with the GS3, they were going to do the same, that they were going to take ice cream sandwich and kind of recreate TouchWiz to be more ice cream sandwich-like. And, and the reason that they kept the GS2 UI more gingerbready was, you know, so that the old, the old users, the, the existing users are not like completely put off when they install the updates. I get that. That's kind so like funny. Kind of like what yeah. did, you know, with uh, Sense 3.6, mm -hmm. where they have the Sense 3.6 upgrade on top of Ice Cream Sandwich for the older phones, which doesn't feel much different than the, uh, than the old version, but it's still Ice, ice Cream Sandwich under the hood. So to me, it's the software that kind of puts me off on the Galaxy mm. S3. And then now that I've seen it in person, uh, of course, the other thing that put me off from the pictures was the, the build quality materials, this whole Samsung plasticiness. They didn't seem to be getting away from that. Mm. And so now that I've played with it in person, I have to say it grew on me quite a bit. It's a really, really nice design uh, and a really well-made phone. It's still too plasticky. I still wish the materials were higher spec, like the One X and the One S. But, um, you know, and durability is a big issue. My, my Galaxy Nexus is well taken care of, but some of the paint is literally starting to just wear out in one of the corners, yeah. which I think is crazy after only five months. So Samsung really needs to look at materials and build quality and fit and finish. And they still haven't done that. It's better but it's still very plasticky. And so that's the thing that puts me off and the software. I think spec-wise is a great phone and it certainly grew on me, especially the white one in person. So, mm, you know, judge one. it when you touch it. Don't just yeah. judge it on pictures and video. Really, this is critical with this phone. It's so thin and so light. It's really remarkable. But I think that the winner, I honestly think that the company that's really pushed the envelope this year so far is HTC. I really think yeah. that they last really year, 
Samsung did with the Galaxy S2 kind of capture our imagination as to what a super phone could be. And they, they, they milked that for everything it was worth, rightfully so. But I think this year, it's the One X that's showing the way. I think that the, the Galaxy S3 is definitely up there. It's, it's 1% in difference and you know if if the one x is a 98 percent the, the, the galaxy s3 is like a 97 right mm. but i mean i think okay. the one x is just that little bit better it's wonder- interesting you talk about the software um and you know uh that touch Wiz ics is you know pretty close to gingerbread they don't want to shock their customers because it's just a little story a friend of mine has the nexus s uh and uh you know she had gingerbread and she's a average consumer i you know just she just happened to get that phone and i remember the day she got ice cream sandwich she freaked out because it's the it's the you know it's the google update so yeah. it, it's vanilla and so she just didn't what is happening to my dialer yeah. and everything like oh, everything wow. changed for her and that was not an easy thing to take huh. so i would think that she would be in that camp like okay great i'm glad we've got an update but it's not that different mm-hmm. you know and i think I, she's getting used to it but it was a shock for days like she's imagine, like i yeah. don't even know what to do and she didn't even know about ics she's like what why did this change the majority the majority of the customers out there don't yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. i mean like, like they're we're all very, phone noobs anyway yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that's true <laughs> but we're all you know we're all so you know neck deep in this yeah. stuff and, and i encouraged you know. her to get the nexus s because you know she was looking for a, at the time um you know the uh, nexus yeah. was out already so i said just get this phone this yeah, will be good for be you great. and you'll get the updates and then that update was way too much for yeah. her to handle yeah. um but she's okay now i think she's got it but it was mm. a little touch and go at the beginning there I it was quite being, a bit different yeah it was mm. quite a bit different it was a big jump to go from uh, gingerbread or or previous mm-hmm. to ice cream sandwich. I mean, it took it, it took me a while to be uh, to be honest mm-hmm. to get used to it. Well, yeah, where looks looking mm-hmm. around, where are things? Where did they move to? This is gone. What's replaced it? So it can be a big it can be a big switch for someone that's not necessarily into it. Like we right, are. Yeah. right. I think that's that's the issue, right? I think this is why I think uh, HTC really nailed it. They, they all the old phones are getting a skin that looks and feels like the old skin on top of ice cream sandwich, so the existing customers won't be put off. I personally don't like that skin. I never did like the old versions of Sense ever. I think they're ridiculous, ludicrous, uh, way bloated, too slow, too heavy, too removed from what gingerbread was supposed to be. But I get it. It works. You know, you get this market of people who already know their phones and they won't have any nasty surprises and they get the benefits of ICS under the hood. But I think that by switching with the One Series to a completely new UI, still calling it Sense, but really lightweight, really fast, really optimized, really that that kind of leverages all the good stuff that Google's done with Ice Cream Sandwich and user experience point of view, I think they did it right. And Samsung had the opportunity to do the same thing. And there are some there are some differences between the Ice Cream Sandwich TouchWiz update for the GS2 and the one on the GS3. They are, I mean, obviously all these new functionalities like uh, uh, S-Voice and all that other stuff, you know, that's been tweaked. But I think overall it misses, it completely misses the boat on, it, it's, it was an opportunity for Samsung to really break away uh, and adopt ICS in fully, and they're just showing that they're not interested in doing that. Has, has and, anyone- uh, I don't think it's going to hurt them in sales at all. But I think to me, it's like they're you know I was looking up to the to the Galaxy S3 because I was hoping that they would be able to do something cool with the software. And I, I think it, all I saw was a bunch of woo woo crap on. <laughs> woo woo crap. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, this nature inspired. Oh yeah. Blah. Really work, and then on top of that, all this the, the presentation was so disjointed. It's oh, like yeah. they took the Korean presentation, which I'm sure was excellent, and then they put it through Google Translate and presented that in London. <laughs> and so, like you know, it didn't make any sense. So things like they would talk about the camera, then take a pause, and 20 minutes later talk about the camera again, rather than put all the camera stuff in one place. I just it was just a complete mess, you yeah. know, to me. But hey. Well, they had an orchestra and everything. <laughs> the orchestra was playing the boot loop music, uh, the Samsung boot loop music. No way, oh, I know no. that boot loop music because you know I, well, my, right? my tablet was constantly do 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 do. Wow, I don't even want to do, <laughs> do the do the music. But yeah, it was it was an interesting presentation. I, I watched the whole thing, and they had uh, a woman at the top of the show, sort of interviewing customers, and then she was at the end of the show. Inter- oh, it was a little a little over the top, but. Um, Anyway, um, let's go ahead and take a quick break. So, Miriam, if you need to take a break, you can. Uh, We're going to thank our sponsor of All About Android today. Our sponsor is Squarespace. Squarespace Squarespace.com is now uh, offering free domain registration to all annual plan 
customers. That is, I can't wait to do this too. This is completely integrated within its sign-up process. It's hassle-free setup and it's approximately a $15 value. And Squarespace already has uh, reduced prices is now offering plans as low as eight dollars per month, and then I think the um, uh, the unlimited is sixteen dollars per month, and that's unlimited pages, bandwidth, storage, yada yada yada. Uh, um, I th- I have the 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 lower cost plan, but I might upgrade pretty soon using my blog a little bit more. Uh, and of course, Squarespace is giving. Uh, is still giving 10% off your purchase on new accounts. So, for example, this means 10% off your first month on monthly plans, 10% off uh, first year on annual plans. Uh, and uh, we have an offer code. Our, if you go to squarespace.com and you should you decide to purchase, our offer code is about Android 5. That's for the month of May, about Android 5. There are so many ways and easy ways to make an awesome uh, blog using Squarespace. You have a Squarespace blog, right? I do, right? yep. I do too. Um, and if you look, let's take a look at some of those examples, uh, Chad. Just so many things that you could do. A gorgeous, I, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm not that great at designing, but it, you can make a really clean, oh, uh, yeah. wonderful uh, website in a matter of minutes. And you don't need to know any CSS or no. HTML or anything like that. You can just, it just all, it just, you can, you can totally tweak it. There's the Sword and Laser website, which mm-hmm. is one of our favorite podcasts. Um, you can tweak the colors, you can tweak the layout and all that stuff. It's really easy to customize. The reason why I use it, I use it for my personal site. And, is it I, RonXO? Yeah, RonXO.com where I just post a lot of, which I haven't updated in months since I've moved, but I tend to put um, um, a lot of, uh, I put my, my monthly music mixes on and I put a uh, video of bands that I see and stuff like that. And it's just really easy to embed mm-hmm. uh, media and all that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, so, you, you know, it's really easy to drop in a Vimeo kind of embed and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, and there's so many widgets yeah. for, uh, you know, uh, your Twitter, yeah. um, just plain text widgets. Uh, they've got, uh, you know, you can import your blog. It's really easy. It took me no time to uh, import from WordPress over. Um, and the mobile app is really good, too. I forgot about that, and I've used that several times because what's great about the mobile app is that you could even check your stats. Yep. So you could see, you know, on the fly, like, did I get a lot of hits today on my uh, on my post? Uh, and uh, it, it, the Android app is just like the iPhone app. Dang it. It's a little too hot, the, uh, the video here. It's so white. It's, it's so, so white. <laughs> I know I got to turn it down. But, you know, here I can look at my stats really quickly to see how many people. Oh, 340 people. All right. So who's been looking and why, you know, uniques and all that stuff and who's been referring and that kind of thing. And then you could even preview um, uh, a draft, that kind of thing you can it's see. Great if you're traveling or yeah. if you're, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, like a quick post or something like that. And um, it's just super, super easy. You can have multiple accounts, obviously, and it's super, super easy to manage. So Squarespace is such a great uh, site to start building your own website. Go out there and do it. Try it, squarespace.com. Uh, and we thank them so much for their support of All About Android. And that offer code again is about Android 5. We haven't done a crazy Squarespace website. No, because okay. we got burned pretty hard. Let's, we, let's, the let's, last, the I know we're having fun. One. I know, I know we're having fun, we but did. let's not have too much fun, right? <laughs> That's kind right. of the plan here. Not too much fun. All right. I've been well, trying to not do uh, that. While we're, getting, while we're waiting to get Miriam on the line, let's go ahead and move into hardware. And I'm going to turn my brightness down on my phone right. so it's not eking, blasting white. Exactly. So hardware. So while uh, some, while Samsung and some of the other uh, manufacturers c- scaled back their presence at uh, CTIA, uh, some other uh, manufacturers stepped up, including LG, hmm. which um, took advantage of the of the free space to kind of roll out a ton of product, including their whole new, a whole new slew, a whole new lineup of uh, LTE handsets running Android. Okay. Um, so uh, this collection, uh, what they've released, uh, includes uh, spans from consumer budgets with the affordable LG Viper, um, the image-enhancing Spectrum, the high-speed Lucid and Nitro, and the Compact Connect. Um, so that's a wide range of great product names there for you. Um, but they all come with 4G, 4G LTE support. Uh, the, LTE, uh, the LG Viper is going to run on Sprint's network, and it's going to come with a 1.2 gigahertz dual-core processor, NFC, and Google Wallet, which I'm jealous of. You're going to talk about um, The Spectrum has got a 4.5-inch true HD IPS display. So there you go, Wait, uh, chiming in on the display side of things. It's got a 1.5 gigahertz dual-core processor, and, of course, got the LTE support. 
Um, and it's got an Android 2.3 version, but it will be upgradable to ICS. Um, and it's going to come preloaded with a bunch of apps. Um, on the high-end side of things, the LG Lucid has a dual-core processor, a 4-inch Corning Gorilla Glass touchscreen, which is interesting to see the Gorilla Glass go, going down to the phone mm-hmm. and not just onto a tablet. Um, but it's, uh, it promises outdoor visibility and an auto-adjust feature. Um, while the LG Nitro HD for HTT has a high def display, high definition display with a 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor. Um, finally, um, <laughs> Ice Cream Sandwich is going to be running on the LG Optimus 4X HD LG quad core smartphone um, with uh, the NVIDIA 1.5 gigahertz Tegra 3 processor, a 4.7 inch true HD IPS display. Um, and basically what they're doing with the Optimus is giving the highest resolution possible. Um, with, and they've also got an 8-megapixel backside, backside illuminated sensor camera, um, complete with a flash. So there's a ton of phones from LG that are wrapped around the rumors of LG's – well, not rumors, but the, uh, the LG TVs they're going to be rolling out with uh, Google TV, um, which we talked a little bit about last week. So LG is really stepping up to the Android world. Um, in addition to that – um, Lenovo announced oh, yeah. a smart TV, yeah. which is interesting mm. because we saw some Lenovo product at CES mm-hmm. around the we TV sure market. Did. And I think this is the same one. So exactly. Yeah. So now we're talking mm. about releasing. I know, which is crazy. <laughs> but um, so yeah, this is the Lenovo K series smart TV, um, and it's going to come with four models ranging from 42 inches to 55 inches, and it's going to run Ice Cream Sandwich, which is pretty cool. Um, and the TVs come with uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon dual core processors and a slew of interactive features. The interesting thing about the Lenovo K series is that they're not running Google TV; it's just running Android. Right. Um, and it's Lenovo's custom kind of home Their entertainment smart Android TV. version. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so then, not to be le- not to be left out in the dark, uh, Sony also showed up the CTIA. Like, hey, hey they got to show up. They yeah. didn't show. They didn't have a watch, but they did have <laughs> the Sony Xperia SX and GX. Um, so the Xperia line um, gets up, upgraded to uh, the very light uh, Xperia SX and GX. Um, the GX has got a 13 megapixel camera, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, 13? But 13 megapixels. Wow. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And these are actually the first Sony branded smartphones to launch in Japan. Um, and where they get crazy data speeds, so they're going to be able to get download speeds of up to 75. Oh, my. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> um, over Can their LTE you network. And both are powered by 1.5 gigahertz dual-core processors running Ice Cream Sandwich. And um, the GX is going to have a 4.6-inch HD screen and 16 gig um, internal storage. And the SX is a little smaller with a 3.7-inch screen. So if you're in Japan Mm -hmm. and you're looking to massively download large files via your phone, these might be good options for you. So that's a little hardware roundup from CTIA. Woohoo! Yeah, fun times. Well, very cool. Um, We're still trying to get Miriam back on the line. I really wanted her for this, too. I know. (laughs) She wrote the book on it. She wrote the book on this. But you know what? uh, We're still trying. You want to do the email first? No, we can. Oh, Oh, maybe. Maybe we should yeah, do the email. Do okay, let's, okay, let's do that. Why not? Why not? All it's right. a hardware-related email. We're okay. having fun. We're, 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 we're keeping it that. loose here. Come right. on. So uh, Eric wrote in from one of my favorite cities in California, Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> and um, I, I used seriously, to, I used to live near Ranch Cucamonga. I seriously thought it was made up. <laughs> no, I couldn't I did believe. Too. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was just one of those like things that you made fun of, like Rancho Bernardo, and like it was for Lincoln. No. Bring it on! Didn't they make up like a rancho town? Yeah, there was a yeah. rancho town, but yeah, 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 yeah. Rancho Cucamonga. Oh yeah, I know that. Anyway. So Eric writes in and he says, I'm sure everyone's I'm sure everyone says it, but I love the show. Thank you, Eric. We appreciate it. Everyone who loves the show, we appreciate it. Um, but Eric says he's got one problem. He just got the Galaxy Nexus, which is very similar to this phone. In fact, this is the Galaxy Nexus. Um, and he's running it on Verizon. I love it, but I've had it for about a month now, and I'm noticing that the battery life is really short. The other day I used it to listen to music at the gym for about an hour and a half. When I got back to my car, I noticed I had used 37% of the battery. He knows that I, Ron has a fairly new Nexus and has, and was wondering if I had any advice uh, about uh, extending the battery life. Should he take it back to Verizon or should he buy an extended battery? Now, it's a good question. Now, since you're on Verizon, I'm not on Verizon. I'm running this on T-Mobile, so I don't I'm know. On you're on Verizon. Okay, yep. so okay, so there you go. So maybe you can weigh in from the Verizon standpoint. But um, I don't know what bloatware Verizon puts on that might drain the battery a little. Have you experienced anything like that? I, I, I have not. I have okay. it a couple times when the battery runs low really quick, and usually it's because there's something running in the background. So what I typically do, if I notice the battery's falling off really quickly, I just do a quick reboot, turn it off, turn it on again, and it's fine. I haven't found the culprit yet, yep. um, but there is, there's like something running, whether it's ads on a on an app that's just running in the background or something is something sucking is, is away the battery, and so you just need to reboot it. And usually that's it. I mean, usually it's okay after that. Yeah. Um, I also bought an extra battery, 
when I got my phone. So that's something you can do. And they do make the bigger size batteries. Well, I was going to say, Jason, Jason so, has, Jason's got the, the Galaxy Nexus on Verizon, and he got the bigger battery. That, so you see how, I don't know if you can really tell here, but see how thin this is? Mm -hmm. Basically, what you do is down here, you got a little, and it goes to a little lip right here. It smooths out that lip. Do you, yeah. Uh, yeah I've got a, I've got a, I don't have the extended battery, and I've got a cover oh, okay, on it, yeah. so it's hard but to so, see. But so what it does is it makes it more of a solid, makes it less thin or makes it a little more thicker, but um, it does give you that extra battery. And in fact, we just got handed one right here, by a lovely chat. So you can see the difference here. So there's a Verizon one with the extended battery versus my phone. Oh, yeah. You and can you see, see right the, there in the see, shadow. Yeah, yeah the right there. there. Yeah. But that yeah. said, if we hold them side by side... It's not, it, too, it's too, not too much heavier, Not right? too much heavier. In fact, yeah. I'm planning on getting the extended battery before I go to San Diego for yeah. Comic-Con. It's, it's yeah. a big um, deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that said... Using 37% of your phone's battery while at the gym for an hour and a half, <laughs> depending on what you're using, if you're just listening to MP3s on your phone, that's probably more. But if you're streaming like I do from Google Music, that's about right. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's your because you're using it. You're passing a lot. Of, you're sending a lot of data. There's a lot of stuff going that way. Yeah. Um, just in general, battery, uh, battery conservancy tips are to turn off GPS, turn off yeah. Wi-Fi, um, bring your display down to the lowest level that it can. Um, play with those, kind of see how much, see how much, see how, how long you can get out of it. And you might want to just take it back, see if you, they give you a new battery. Just maybe you just need a fresh one. So, right. It could yeah. just be a defective battery. Yeah. I mean, it could be that because I've had this, I've had similar issues and it's always been a process or something running. Yep. But also, I mean, if I am watching a movie on a plane or something, I mean, two, three hours is pretty much all I get. So, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend either getting the, you know, if you're going to do it, why not go for the bang, get, get the most bang for your buck, bring it back and see if you can get the bigger battery um, and, you know, go that route. But yeah. I don't know. I when I use it for for Google Music, just listening to music or anything like that, especially if you can turn off the display. Yeah, um, that makes a huge difference. So if yeah, display, you're display is always the biggest drain on your battery, especially mm -hmm. if the, the brightness turned all the way up yeah. right. and you're keeping it on if you're watching video or anything yep. like that. So, so if you're just listening to music, turn that display off, you know, as soon as you get your playlist going or whatever. And then go do your workout. I bet it'll it'll probably last longer. But yeah. yeah, maybe a trip to the store and see if they can give you a new battery. I bet I bet they'll give you one anyway, and at least try that and see what happens. Yeah, and, and get that extended battery anyway, because it doesn't make the phone that much thicker, and it'll give you regardless. It'll give you a little more battery life, which sounds like you need. So, yeah. and write in and let us know what happens. Let us know how it went. Uh, so, thank you, Eric Stein, for that uh, question. And we have Miriam back, so Hello. we are going to be talking now. Uh, Aaron has our uh, in house. Uh, HTC Evo 4G LTE. <laughs> yep. The HTC Evo 4G LTE was, uh, it's going to be available this Friday, actually. Yeah. So Exciting. it's coming up. There and it uh, here it is. Yep. And yeah, oh, there we go. You, so dueling, we both have one. Dueling, we have yeah. dueling ones. I've there got, go. I've got this one right here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is out or it's going to be out this Friday and it's only, uh, 200 bucks, uh, on Sprint. So it's a Sprint LTE device. And um, from the specs that I've read in Miriam's review, and we're going to turn it over to you, I think, in a minute to tell us more about this, but um, the specs are pretty darn good. In fact, for Sprint, this is probably the phone that, you know, since you can't get the uh, HTC One X, um, you know, and some of the other high-end phones, I mean, this is a real good competitor um, with some of those higher-end phones. The display looks fantastic. It's very responsive. Uh, it's very thin as well. So, um so yeah, so Miriam, you did the review on this. So I'm going to turn it over to you to give us some some insight on this phone. Well, it wasn't just me, right? I mean, I I, um, I helped do the review. So uh, basically, uh, it's a it's a one X, yeah. but they've they've made a few changes to it. So uh, um, basically, you have um, the unibody design is really different. It's made mm -hmm. out of aluminum instead of uh, instead of uh, polycarbonate uh, plastic. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's quite a bit. Uh, it's quite a bit of an improvement, actually. I, I personally think, in a way, uh, the, the problem is you see that shiny part on top there. Mm -hmm. That is kind of disappointing because it, it's really fingerprint magnet. It feels mm -hmm. cheap compared to the rest of the phone. The kickstand's metal. It's really nice. The uh, bottom, uh, uh, the little bottom piece there is uh, kind of some sort of. Uh, uh, matte finished plastic and it's a unibody in the sense that the front uh, rim and the back as well as the, uh, the the edge this this polished edge is all one piece it's just been polished to look a different color um, so it's I, at first when I first saw it I didn't really actually like this design very much 
And uh, then now I has grown on me quite a bit using it. Um, it's, I don't think it's as elegant as the 1X, but it is basically a 1X for Sprint. So that's, you know, that's what you're getting, right? Uh, the, the, the difference, of course, is it's designed to run on Sprint's network. So it has CDMA and it has LTE, which is not live yet. So you're basically can't fall back to the old WiMAX network at all. So you're stuck with a phone that until they turn on LTE is a 3G CDMA phone. So I'm not sure how people will feel about that because that's a, that's quite a bit of a bummer. As you know, Sprint's network, especially now that they've acquired the iPhone, has slowed down significantly on EVDO CDMA. So, and the other beef I have with this phone uh, is that it has um, no HSP plus GSM support for the rest of the world. So if you leave the US or Canada, there might be a few countries like Korea where you might be able to roam, but there's very, very, there's not a world phone basically. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other, one other little thing that I just want to point out because I think it's unusual and weird is that Sprint chose to do this with all their LTE phones so that there's no removable SIM card. The SIM cards are embedded in the phones, yeah. which means that you're going to say, well, it doesn't really matter since they're designed to work on Sprint only. But the thing is, if you are on LTE on Verizon, for example, you can then use uh, different devices with the same SIM. You can swap from, say, uh, uh, a cheaper phone to a better phone and maybe take the cheaper phone with you when you go hiking. Um, and that's a really nice thing to be able to do. And with Sprint, the way they're implementing LT, they're, they're embedding the SIMs, which is kind of goes against the whole concept and standard of LT, in my opinion. So I, I wish they wouldn't do that. Um, but again, I think this is as close as you can get to the One X. There are some things that are better. It does have a dedicated camera key, which is nice. I was about to mention that. That is the one, the one yeah. big difference. And uh, Nicole, who's uh, reviewing it for us, she said, you know what? It's really nice to have the dedicated camera button. It, is, it, makes, really it really makes it a lot easier to get strangers to take photos for you. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> It adds that one thing that I thought that I complained about in my in my one X and one S review, which is that uh, you can't lock exposure exposure and focus by half pressing a non existent mm. button. But you can here. As you know in a real camera, that's an important feature where you, you kind of aim your shot, you you kind of maybe move your framing a bit so you can get the right exposure and focus. You half press the button yeah. and you frame things and you take the shot. And that is something you just can't do at all on uh, on the One X and One S. Uh, and so on the one on the Evo, you can. Of course, the other big difference is there is ex expandable storage. There's a micro SD card slot on this. Oh, thing. there is. Okay, yeah. I didn't know so that. The battery is still sealed, but there is an addition to the 16 gigabytes built in. There is an extra slot, so you can put up to uh, 32 in there. And that makes it a total of 48. And that's actually quite a huge improvement, really, when you think about it. Well, it's the one thing uh, holding me back from actually purchasing the One X because right. 16 gigs, sorry, Ron, uh, I don't think I can do it. I have so much that I store. You, you can't take my challenge? Uh, he challenged me to uh, live with only 16, uh, with only a 16 to not have gig a, phone. To have a phone and, without an SD card. And, right. Yeah, and, live with the 16 gig. Hey, if I can do it, I'm a data, I'm a data. <laughs> or, I'll say it. I don't mind saying it. And I'm already past 16 gig on my yeah. Verizon. So, because yeah. I got 32 gigs, I'm already past 16 gigs. So, yeah. yeah, I would have a hard time. I mean, that was one of the things on my um, the Verizon uh, Galaxy Nexus that I was a little bit afraid of. It's working out okay because, and I, I mentioned this on a post by Will Wheaton because he was thinking about getting the Galaxy Nexus. And one of the things I do is I plug in a USB stick of mm -hmm. if, I, if i want to take movies with me on a plane for example i don't put them on my phone i put them on a usb stick i've got a little adapter that costs like a dollar 99 on amazon and you know you plug in the usb stick and you just watch your movies right from there so right. for those things that you're like you know oh i wish i had a little bit more storage also i'm streaming most of my music now so you know but i'm still i'm over 16 already so if i had bought the at&t version i'd already be like having to go in and delete a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. right. so i don't know I like having the option Me of throwing too. in some external storage. True, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that 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 option isn't nice, but I think that you can live within that confine. Like once you say, okay, this, these are the walls, this is the boundaries of what I have, then you figure out how to work. Yeah. Right? And admittedly, I don't actually. I the majority of the media I use on my phone is streaming. I don't. Yeah. I don't have a. I don't. You know, carry files with me. Um, although I did just get one of those neat little Seagate drives that stream via Wi-Fi, like oh, an external drive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's that's another option as well, too. If you have okay. an external media that streams to the, and the, mm -hmm. the device becomes a player. Right. Yeah. But anyway, nonetheless. All right. so. so overall, a decent phone though, right, Miriam? Yeah, I think, you know, overall, I mean, you're looking at, 
one of the best phones on the market right now. I, to me, honestly, the, the thing that kind of makes it not as good as the One X is that it doesn't quite have that refined design that the One X has. Uh, but it does add a few things to the table. Like it brings the uh, it brings the shutter key, the expandable storage. You can see in that picture here, the top left above the camera. Um, and it brings the kickstand, wow. which for some people is a huge deal. If you go back, you see a right, uh, right there. That's the micro SD. Yeah, you're yeah. pointing it out. Oh, okay. So, so um, you know, that's that's the three things that are missing from the One X for yep. sure. Yeah. I mean, the kickstand, arguably, but but on the other hand, you lose some of that design juiciness. You can see them all side by side in those pictures here, and and you you lose these are actually all the Sense Four devices. The V on the very left, the incredible 4G LTE which is also a Sense 4 ice cream sandwich device for Verizon that was announced at the CTA. Then there's the 1S in the middle, the Evo 4 GLT, and then the 1X at the end. These are all of them, right? And there's yeah. another picture of them facing you, so you can have an idea. But basically, um, the biggest part, I, I, I can live with some of the restrictions of both the 1X and the, and the uh, you know, as far as like the, the storage expansion. I can live with that because I don't have that much on my phone. But I do feel that what's really lacking on the Evo right now is is the fact that you can't use it anywhere else in the world. To me, that's, I mean, it's a yeah. super phone. I mean, it's supposed to be able to do that. And here's the completely insane part, you guys, is that the radio supports GSM and HSPA. It's oh. disabled in firmware. Oh, that's wrong it's using the yeah. qual it's using a qualcomm snapdragon s4 crate dual core processor and that has a, it's a system on a chip that has all the radios built right in so they've just turned them off of course it probably doesn't have the antennas it needs as well but just get, gives you an idea that they could actually have done it and then the other big deal for me is there's no lt network right now right i mean if you buy this phone you're on you're on cdma yeah. video until you know and if you're one of the markets that they're not targeting to get for another year like, mm -hmm. you're just going to be stuck with the slowest freaking network in the U.S. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know, the reality is, yeah, I mean, it's it's affordable. It has unlimited data. Those are fantastic things it has going for it. But when you have absolute crap for data, what do you need a super phone for? Here's right, the, here, exactly. Here we go. I mean, We're like, come on, Netflix, these, let's do this. On, look, and you're on 3G. I know. Yeah, yeah, these, yeah, phones so. are, these phones are designed to be utilized in a, in a, in a data-intensive way, All yep. you know, and... and um, the display is so beautiful and everything. Mm -hmm. You're going to be using it more and more. And to not have that now, now it's coming, right? I mean, you know, they're getting it together. But um, until that gets there to be not, I mean, I can't believe sometimes when I, I, even on my phone, when I go down to 3G, I'm like, what is wrong? Is my phone broken? Do I need to, re like, what's going on? And it's like, mm -hmm. oh, no, it's just on 3G. Yeah. I mean, we're so spoiled, right? It's a, definitely a first world problem. But still, I mean, I think we're talking about technology here. That's a huge drawback right now. Yeah. yeah. I'd agree. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, uh, I'm, I'm desperately trying to look at video so I can play it during uh, while, at, while putting the phone down using the kickstand. So, uh, well, let's move on. Uh, all right. Uh, we're going to dive into some really great apps. There we go. Okay, we're back out. Time to talk about apps. Google released a couple of uh, pretty good updates this week, one for Maps and then another one for Google+, Plus, uh, which was kind of interesting. But let's talk about Maps first. So Google released uh, an update for Maps, which added a couple of things. Actually, it added one thing and enhanced another thing. Mm -hmm. So it added offers. So now you can get offers on Google Maps um, you know, that a little pop up that comes up. I haven't seen one yet actually come up on my phone. I've been looking for them, but I, I guess I live. I, I haven't seen one either. Yeah, okay. Either. So, you know, I've been looking for them, but they're not there. I, I, I know that the application's updated because it told me it was going to, <laughs> but that's it, right? There's nothing came up. But anyway, these offers are going to be popping up to give you deals close to where you're at. So if you're walking by, you know, McDonald's or whatever, there'll be a, a uh, little pop-up that'll come up and say, hey, free fries when you buy a Big Mac or something. So, I, I mean, I think it's pretty cool. There's a lot of these services around right now that are doing this kind of stuff and it kind of uh, Groupon and all those kinds of things are getting really popular. So I think this is a really, really cool update. It'll be interesting to see if it actually works and if um, uh, companies actually sign up to use it. That's the big thing, right? If everyone's going to Groupon, maybe they won't really care about Google Maps, but Maybe they will. Well, I, think I, they like will. The, I like the idea of the contextual offer, though, because I, yeah. I do get Google offers and I and I take a look at it. And I've actually gotten it was a framing offer. I got like fifty percent off frames and yeah. stuff like that. But I like the idea of of getting offers 
contextually where you are. I think whether or not they can integrate it and have it not be annoying will be interesting. Right, yeah. right. Obviously, Yelp does that quite a yep. bit, and um, Foursquare is doing yep. it now. So it's becoming a bigger thing. The thing about Google is that they have the eyeballs. So they've got all these phones out there. Everyone's using maps already to figure out where they're going. I use it like when I go to San Francisco and I want to get some lunch. I pretty much always use Google Maps. So if it pops up and says, you know, get a free lunch or buy one, get one free or You're something. You're going there. Yeah. I'm going there. So <laughs> yeah. it's actually a really good thing. Um, so we'll see what happens. They also add, they also updated some indoor maps. So they've been putting these indoor maps, which if you haven't seen them, they're really, really cool. Uh, if you're in an airport or something like that and you just happen to pull up Google Maps, all of a sudden you'll realize that it's really cool. all the terminals are like laid out with, mm. you know, what's where and the stores and the gates and everything. And uh, so when that's available, it's really, really cool. So they're expanding the indoor maps um, in the U.S. and Japan. So there'll be more indoor maps coming out um, and uh, you'll be able to use those when you're when you're walking around in, in various stores and things like that, malls and things, uh, and especially airports were the first target for this. So Very cool. Yep, so more indoor maps are coming. Uh, next up, I also said there was another one, uh, Google iPhone. Uh, the Google Plus iPhone app gets updated and all the Android fanboys go crazy. Because why are they and, getting an update? We're yeah, not getting an update. Exactly. <laughs> Android didn't get an update. Now I know that uh Vic um Gunduntra, Gunduntra said that there was gonna be an Android update and was gonna have some extra surprises. So we're gonna get so, a better app. Yeah, that's that yeah, that's yeah. Gonna, this is the bottom line. Happen. And yeah. the reason why I put that in the rundown is because actually the iPhone update is really nice. The UI yeah. is fantastic. And they, they have to they have to play in iOS if they, they want to get if they want to well, get they're trying to get Google those Plus. those those yeah. users because yeah. they know they already have the Android people. Yep, exactly. Uh so they're trying to get those users so okay. Okay, I, you know, I thought about it a little bit more. I'm like, that's fine as long as our app is better. Yep. So yep. that's what I'm cool. looking for. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, turntable.fm. Does any of you guys use that? I did back when it was. I know, yeah, right? Yeah, so I it was to, really but... popular. <laughs> and then I think, like, draw something, the user, the usage no, kind of dropped a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it was lightly. Yeah. yeah. Basically, the novelty wore off. Right. It um, did. Yeah. Um, but it's still out there. And now it's fun. There, Every now and then there I go is into an it. Android app available, and it's free. Now, I know that international. Um, our international viewers cannot partake, so I'm sorry. But the, essentially, you pick and once you log in with your Facebook or Twitter account. Before it was only Facebook; they've changed that. Yep. Um, then you find all of these rooms, and, and then you just pick a, a room to join, and then you'll hear music being spun by. Um, I'm going to go to. I love the '80s. I'm so glad you did. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> well. And this is what it looks like for those watching the video. You have, once you create your account, you have a little avatar. What else? I think this is me. I have I'm, green hair. Yep, that's me. I mean, I it looks are. just like the web version. It sure so, does. Yeah. Yeah, it's simple. And then you can go in. Whoa. Okay, the out, oh, the outfield. I remember them. Yeah. All right, so you go up it's there. There's, time, there's five DJs at the top. And they've got, they, you know, um, when someone leaves, you can go back on, and then you could, you know, say uh, thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm going to thumbs that up. Uh, you could see your cue, which um, I have a little cue. Oh, I was looking for a Spandau Ballet song earlier to play. So I'm Eileen's gonna really you. into Spandau Ballet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have some other songs on there, and you could do a search and, and fill your cue. Uh, and then when you go back in here, you can do a little chatting with the room, there's some people who are chatting. It's, a it's cool. Bit. It's cool because it's like turntables fun. Is, I'm not as big of a fan as the public rooms, like the the mm -hmm. random ones. But I, well, every now and then, me and my friends would be like, "Oh, let's just all go." Like when we're at work, let's go into a room and let's yeah. you know whatever. And this is great because now I can go to the airport and I can yeah. still do that. Right. And I can, yeah, because it works great yeah. on the phone too. So and you could uh, email your. You can add that room to favorites. Oh, I should do that actually. Oh, and then you could share the room that you're in on Facebook, Twitter, email, whatever, whatever. But it's simple, um, and I think it's a tiny bit buggy, but overall, uh, it it does what uh, it proclaims. And yeah. sorry, international viewers, but you can't get this yet. It's, blame the music. Yeah, that's the music, it's the music, it's the music right. industry, yeah, that's the problem, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that's turntable uh, dot FM, and it's free in the uh, Google Play Store right now. Very exciting. Um, and another app that uh, we talked about last week with the Sam back to the Samsung, the Samsung uh, S three launch uh, announced that Flipboard would be coming out exclusively for the Samsung uh, Galaxy S three. But like any exclusive Android app, somehow the APK leaked, and now Flipboard, if you know where to go, you can get your hands on it, and we have it. So uh, Chad, if you want to throw it up on my screen. Um, I've got it pulled up on here. Um, basically, oh. just flip it vertically, and then we'll be all set. Well, here we go. 
So there, yeah, we there go. you go. So here is Flipboard on for the phone. And what's interesting, if you've used uh, Flipboard on the iPad before, it'll look somewhat familiar, pulls in photos from your feed and makes the kind of magazine. But what was interesting to me is that when I pulled it up, I immediately went to, and I got my touch things, I went to swipe left and right, but nothing happened. And I saw that there was, oh, there's some movement upwards. And so mm-hmm. you just flip up. And that's how you get to you get to browse through that's all of your um, your things. So um, what you can do is you can just tap to go into one of your folders, and here's my tech feed. And you can, if you want to read an article, you just tap on it, and you can it'll pull up that article, and you can scroll and read it like any normal you know kind of reader. Um, and then if I want to see to go to the next article, I just flip up, and I go keep flipping up, and I can browse. Um, really neat. Uh, this is this version is um, optimized for the phone. Um, it works on a tablet. I, I installed it on the Motorola Zoom, and it just it does the zoom thing, and it just zooms out. Mm-hmm. But um, it's not totally tablet optimized, though. Um, I'm curious. I'll be curious to see when the exclusive kind of ends. Um, what Flipboard's plans are for tablet specific apps, or if it's just going to be one app, you know, kind of one app that mm-hmm. uses the same way. Um, but I liked it. I mean, after playing with it, I, I thought it was fun. It makes it actually. What I really like is it makes the. Um, it utilizes graphics. This is my, this is from my website, and so I'm sorry that it's boobies. Um, when there when there are when so when there are graphics, um, it integrates really nicely to make it like a nice kind of magazine kind of um, f- uh, format, um, which is a lot of fun to uh, take a look at. So it's what, how I like to uh, uh, take a look at my media whenever they can reformat an RSS feed to make it prettier. It's always mm-hmm. better. And Flipboard is one of the best folks at doing that. So Flipboard, if so. Get a, a sense of what you can look for if you're a Galaxy S3 user and get the exclusive, or if you know where to go on the internet and find the leaked APK, you can play along at home. So, awesome! Cool. All right, uh, we'll put a link for the link. Uh, it's on the, the XD, it's on the XDA yeah, forums. Yeah, the XDA forums. I'd we'll be put a, a little link snarky. in there. Yeah, it's on I the know, XDA like, forums. If you know yeah. where to find it, come on. It's on. real easy. Just Google, Google is your Google, friend. Google Flipboard yeah. Android leak. Yeah. That's all you got to do. You'll find it. But it's on the XDA forums. But it's also you know it is yeah. is not the official. So it's not yeah not yeah so. All those caveats. I, it already crashed on my phone once. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, it's nice to play around. I like having it, too. Yeah. Okay. Let's move into the arena. Two enter. One lives. The Android Arena. It's a okay. La- so taking a look at last week, revisiting the world of the arena last week. Um, whoa, we've had a last minute surge. I know. So, which had nothing. I didn't even do anything about that. I know. Before the show, <laughs> Skyview was the clear winner, and obviously Ron fans came to his defense. I didn't even do anything though. I didn't no, say I'm anything. just saying. Yeah, I know, but yeah. they came to your defense or something. <laughs> but Skyview still wins. Skyview, Skyview wins by one, for Android. one point. One vote. One vote. Wow, Amazing. You no, know, we got to lock this down because sometimes it's like I could tell people are going in there and just like voting a bunch of times. And I'm like, come on. But man, I didn't, I didn't even, down. I didn't no, even No, I know. Lobby. I'm not yeah. blaming you. I just want to be clear. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> saying Ron did a little tweet yeah, yeah, and said, yeah, hey, yeah. by the way, I've done I'm kind of losing by five votes. Yeah. So uh, vote for me. No, I know you didn't do that. And now that. it's tied. And see, but yeah. I, I'm giving it to and Skyby. Now I'm I'm giving it to Skyv. It's too late. I no, don't I, care no, who's I agree. voting. No, I agree. Before <laughs> too the sh- bad. Be- no, before the show, we look. Before we should the show do an started. hour before. Yeah, and before then the show it. started, it was Skyv. Skyv had about ten more votes than I was. It was close. Well, that's what happened so. last week. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to win last week, and then <laughs> it was already then, predetermined. Like an hour before the show, and then you won. Yeah. So, yeah. Aaron, you will go last, and People it's like, like risk, then I had I'm to move you. things well, around. It was like, oh, you know, I'm going to lock it down. Once again, I would like to point: as long as our guest, I won. That's right. You won by like two or three. As long as our guest wins. Yes. I'm okay with it. As yes. long as you or Jason don't win oh, and, it, and it doesn't affect the, the standings, then I'll do all right. Nice. Speaking of which, Tech Ace, where are we at with the standings in the chat room, if you can let us know. But, um, but yeah, so Skyview wins this week, and I come in second. Eileen comes in third. It so was close, though. Currently right now, Jason's got six wins. Eileen's got five. I've got four, and the guest has three. So that's a nice little. I, I hope the guest beats us all. Yes, that's really that, that's, that's <laughs> so what So, Miriam, I hope your app wins. <laughs> Uh, and and you just take it all. Uh, all right, my I, I'm the loser. I'm the super loser. So I'm going to go first. <laughs> that's, how we, that's how I described it earlier. <laughs> I know. Super loser goes first. Um, a while ago, Jason um, he profiled an app that is quite similar, and it is called Wi-Fi File Explorer Pro. Um, and I remember there's a lot of chatter even before he did the app. Um, a lot of people have been saying, you know, you guys should really do this app, and it's called AirDroid. It's very similar. 
similar to uh, Jason's app, but it has kind of a slightly better UI, I, at least I think so. Uh, it's free in the Android marketplace right now. And what it basically does, it helps you manage wirelessly uh, your Android phone on a browser. You don't need a desktop app or anything. You just go ahead and launch your browser. Um, and what you do, Chad, can you see my phone here? I'm going to launch the app. And there's a couple ways to do this. You can open the web address by going to web.airdroid.com or, or the... Um or the other uh, the choice down here. or And then once you do that, the step two, you'll see a, um, a QR code. Uh, and you could just scan the QR code or you can enter the passcode to log in. I'm going to try. I love live demos because they always fail. <laughs> yeah. And like super uh, fail on the live demo. So I'm going to... Uh, wait for the uh, w and you have to be on the same Wi-Fi account so make sure your phone is uh, on the same Wi-Fi account as your um, uh, as your desktop and so what I'm going to do here and you probably can't see it but I'm going to yeah you can't see it I'm going to go ahead and scan the QR code and success and then in just a few minutes my desktop success now I've connected uh, and now slowly but surely Maybe the Wi-Fi gods will be on my side. Now you can see um, my phone, basically. Now, the only caveat to this that I'm a little bummed out is that it doesn't see your SD card, only your internal storage. Mm. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer because I wanted to actually uh, move things around in that way. And you could see, Ron, uh, my internal storage is at capacity. Hey, what's up? I'm at Jason Howell from Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jason. He can't. He doesn't want to stop being on the show, even for the miss Philippines. Jason. So um, let's go back here to uh, the desktop. Now, um, what happens here is you could see the files uh, very easily on your phone. Again, this is all Wi-Fi. It's going to take forever. Oh, maybe not. Uh, so you can see your files. You can upload. Um, what I liked here is when I go to my music, you see all the music on my phone. I can actually set. Um, I can do. I can either download the track onto my desktop. I could also change my phone ringtone, uh, and I'm going to do that right now. Hey, Ron, you want to call me? Sure. Call me. Let's see if that changed my ringtone. Right. Uh, while you do that, I'll show you some other things. You can actually see. I won't show you, but you could uh, text message. So when um, somebody could text message me, and I'd see the message pop up. I'm afraid to show it right now because I don't want to see anybody's um, personal. Um, uh, uh, phone number come up um, and Ron is calling me let's see if and do you remember if you saw my desktop I changed the song to Zooby Zooby Zoo oh cool nice so it worked I'm very happy with that uh, okay good you could take screenshots of your phone so um, nice very cool so for those of you who don't have that option yet on your phone you have an older phone out there you could do that this is actually what is um what my uh, desktop or my phone looks like right now. I'll go to my home page. And there cool. you go. Uh, lots of options here. Uh, you could see the videos um, and you could also play the videos. Now I deleted these already, but I took this. It's going to take a while to load run at this time, but you could play videos uh, off your phone wirelessly onto your desktop. So if you had a TV show or something or whatever, it does work. It's just taking forever because of Wi-Fi. Uh, but it's a nice uh, option to have. I'm going to quit out of that. Uh, you can see all your photos. Uh, you can download. You can upload. You can drag and drop photos from your desktop onto AirDroid that goes straight to your phone. Uh, again, you can see your contacts. This here, uh, URL on your device. So basically, I can go Google dot com or any website and on my phone you'll see it went straight to google.com you can have it open kind of interesting uh, option there or any website that you uh, that you want uh, you can also save something on your clipboard uh, you can see um, the strength of the wi-fi and strength of your um your mobile device uh, and you can see your battery uh, percentage right now i'm at 97 percent and then there's also multiple windows here, so you can do a little bit of multitask management. Uh, and let's see here. If I go into, yeah, I can upload. I can just drag and drop files, and it'll go into the folder of your choice. If you have room, I don't have room right now <laughs> to delete a lot of stuff. Um, and you can install apps. 
so like that Flipboard app, if you wanted to do it via AirDroid, just drag the APK in and install. Um, and, you know, they have some call logs that you could see. Uh, again, ringtones. They recommend some stuff too, like other apps uh, from their services that you could buy or, or, or download as well. So um, it's, a, it's a pretty nice UI. Um, there's also passcode protection as well on here if you're worried. But they, you know, they have a secure uh, server. And um, let me see here really quick. Uh, yeah, they have a secure HTTPS connection, uh, even on public Wi-Fi, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but overall, it's really easy to use. Oh, uh, on your device, on the app itself, let's see if I could see that. You can see uh, what's going on here. You can actually take a little snapshot of, you know, your battery, your CPU, your RAM, <laughs> my my full SD card, <laughs> all of that. Um, so everyone knows the SD card is the the, the it, SD the card intern, partition, the yes, partition. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, and again, this is only my internal phone. It's not seeing my 16 gig uh, SD card that um, is not full, by the way. <laughs> so um, and then you can just see all your folders here. So pretty handy, nice UI. And I'm going to exit right now. And that is AirDroid. And it's free in uh, the Google Marketplace. So thanks to all of you. There's a bunch of people who have been um, saying, you guys should just do AirDroid. And I've seen a lot of people talking about it. And I had to use it recently because I was wondering what the heck was going on with my phone. Uh, because I couldn't do a backup with Titanium. And I didn't understand. I'm like, what, what is taking up so much of my phone? And I figured it out just by using this. So uh, very helpful. And uh, cool. just a little different spin uh, than the Wi-Fi Pro uh, Explorer that yeah. uh, Jason showed. Uh, Very cool. Way back. Very powerful. So uh, AirDroid, free at the uh, Google Play Store. Can't beat free. Can't beat free, but well, you yeah. have something free. I do have something free. And there's a pro <laughs> version. I've got okay. both, so I'll show you the difference. Um, but everyone who, you know, I, I was telling Eileen before the show, I went practical this week. Um, again, my mantra with apps is I love to find apps that do one thing really well. Um, even better if you can find an app that does it really well and at the same time knock out three to four different apps. Mm -hmm. So I only have one app on my phone and I might have found one. Uh, this one is called Calculations 4.0. And basically what it is is it's a calculator. Um, what caught me, what caught my eye at it was that it was um, a calculator uh, recently updated to all of, uh, to go with Ice Cream Sandwich's whole design look and feel. It's designed almost to speak Google spec exactly in terms of the the menu items and the switches and things like that. But what's even cooler and uh, Chad, if you scroll back up here on the on the uh, Google Play Store to the top to the big graphic, it's the calculator, it's a currency converter, it's a unit converter, it's a mortgage calculator, and it's a tip calculator. Now, cool. I'm not really often you know calculating my mortgage because that's painful, but tip calculator. Currency converter and calculator are three apps that I have. Three individual apps on my phone that I use a lot when I'm, I, you know, when I go to England, I'm constantly, con you know, doing the the conversion to to pounds. Um, tip calculator almost all the time when you go out because I'm awful at math and even though I have my own little tricks. But when you get more people in the mix and you have dinner with eight people, things like that, um, and just the general calculator, the stock calculator is great, but uh, the, uh, other apps can make them even better. So I've got it here on my phone and I will show everyone if we cut to that. So I downloaded the free version to check it out. And here you'll see um, along the top, you see this is the menu where you can scroll through the different types of calculators. Um, and again, using the little ice cream sandwich design uh, uh, display uh, uh, UI uh, points. Um, real big numbers, really good. You know, makes it real easy to do math. I like doing math um, via calculators because I'm bad at it in my head. Um, so that's just a straight up calculator. It's normal. You'll notice this little box here. Um, it says get pro version. This is the advanced scientific calculation stuff. Um, and if you buy the pro version, which is 99 cents in the Google Play Store, you unlock that. And I actually did download it so we can compare and contrast and you can see and so now you see that get pro version opens up and now i can do square roots and i can do parentheses and i can all i've got it and you'll notice here it's got the little uh ice, ice cream sandwich little menu locator so if i just swipe across i can get to logarithms and mods and sins and cosines and tangents and stuff that i never did because i cheated in math in high school <sighs> um shh, don't tell my mother um, okay, so <laughs> then additionally, you can you can pop over to the measurements. Um, if you're working around the house and you're like me and you don't know the difference, but you know your feet to centimeters to all stuff like that, this is a great way to um, to adjust it. Um, you can down here. I'm sorry, down here at the bottom, whatever the currency down here at the bottom, you can change whether you're you're, you're measuring length or area or weight. They've got time. It's got temperature, volume. It's it's really 
crazy. So you can type in, we can do 123. And so 123 centigrams are 6.5 carats or 1.23 grams or 1230 milligrams or 0.027 pounds. Crazy. Um, so it makes it makes it real easy to do a conversion of measurements, um, which is particularly great if you're looking at British um, recipes and you don't know how it goes back oh, to American yeah. stuff, which happens yeah. to me a lot. I use that all the time. Yeah, exactly. So great measurements thing. Um, the currency calculator is top notch. Basically, you can add different currencies that you want to add to it. So we're going to add the Argentine peso here. And um, I can change. Okay, so I'm in England and I want to, you know, it's 60 pounds. So that's going to be $96 or 75 euros or 96 Canadian or 192 Brazilian reals um, or 428 Argentine pesos. Um, so it makes it real simple and easy to do a quick currency conversion. Uh, there's a mortgage calculator if you do that sort of thing. Um, really depressing um, when you look <laughs> at my interest rate. Um, but So we're going to skip that. But the tipping calculator is super cool. This, this one's really great because, you know, if you're out with a lot of friends and let's say the bill is $250 – and there's, you know, seven people and tax in California is eight and a half percent, right? And we're going to include tax and in the tip, we want to leave 20 percent. What's really neat is that now it tells us how much the tip amount should be total, how much the tip from everyone should be, seven, $7.75, the total amount with the tip and how much each for everybody. And what's cool is that they've got the little slider scale. So you can say, OK, if I want to dial down the tip, what would it be? So it's neat little inter, um, uh, interaction points, and it actually also lets you adjust when how much rounding off you want to do if you want to round off the tip to the nearest dollar or to 50 cents or not round at all. Um, and you know you can simply swipe between um, between the different calculator types, and it scrolls right through them. And it's just a great advanced calculator that works an ice cream sandwich. So uh, 99 cents for the pro version that unlocks all the scientific calculator stuff. It unlocks some of the um, added stuff with the tipping calculator and some of the measurement stuff. Um, the free version, though, is totally usable. If you don't want to pay 99 cents, you can totally get unlock the power of having three, you know, five calculators in one. So uh, right. calculations cool. 4.0. Very cool. Thank you very much, Ron. Now let's move on to Miriam. No, don't. No, you're going to show oh, her yes, app. Oh, yes, I am. Right. <laughs> uh, who has a great app as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm as I've said last time I was invited, I'm not a huge app fan. There were kind of four on my radar lately that have been uh, pretty awesome on Android for me. Uh, was Instagram, which everybody loves, right? I mean, uh, hopefully uh, I still do. Um, there was Flickr, which I didn't know had an app. I mean, they used oh, to yeah. a long time ago, but it was really crap. And then I reinstalled the, the app recently and it was actually quite nice. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know, there were two more I gave you. I can't remember which they were, but one of them, the one I want to talk about is Uber. And I'm not sure if anybody here is familiar. Uh, everybody probably isn't because it's Uber is only available in select cities worldwide right now. Uh, many of them in the U.S. And what it is, is... Uh, it's the next generation of of the taxi cab, mm -hmm. basically. I mean, it's not just an app. It's a it's a whole new idea. Uh, basically, this is how it works. You install an app on your phone. You can create an account right on the app. And uh, from there, you can basically ask, uh, you know, you can, you can summon, as it were, a cab anytime. Um, and the way it works is it's not just a cab. You're getting basically a, a limo kind of deal. You're getting a, a town car. Uh, with its own driver, and uh, you're getting impeccable service, and, and they guarantee, they pretty much not guarantee, but they pretty much give you the the opportunity to get this cab very quickly and to get it where you are. Um, and the best part of it, I think, the really the best part is that you don't really have to pay because you already they already have your credit card info, so you there's no pay at the end, no tip at the end, no sliding your card and some uh, machine or giving handling cash because the Driver doesn't want to take your card. Uh, the cars are clean. The drivers are 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 clean, <laughs> are nice, <laughs> are friendly. <laughs> uh, so you know you pay a premium for all this. So it's kind of like imagine a limo service, but you don't have to book ahead. Or imagine a fancy taxi cab that's really technologically connected. That's what Uber is. And obviously, it's available in San Francisco. I now pretty much use it exclusively to go to the airport when I need to travel. For those of you who travel a lot, and can, certainly for those of you who can expense things for travel, Uber is the way to go if it's available in your city. I think it's New York, San Francisco, a bunch of other cities in the U.S. I think it's also available in Europe in some places now. 
And I think it's really revolutionizing uh, the cab limo kind of, uh, you know, situation in, in a really amazing way. Um, you can see the picture of the, so basically you, you uh, it knows where you are from GPS. You say, I want a cab. It has all your credit card info and stuff in there. And it basically tells you uh, how long it's going to be before, first of all, whether a cab is available. And secondly, how long it'll be before it gets to you. And you can follow a track in on your GPS until it gets to you. And then when it gets to you, um, the driver will call. They have your phone number. They will also text you. Uh, if you want. I mean, there's basically the interface is app, text, and calls. And you can see the picture of the driver before you, he gets to you so you can recognize And the he driver. has your and, picture too. And he, exactly. <laughs> he has your picture so he can find you, he or she. And it's really quite amazingly well done. Um, and, and then basically, uh, you can also rate the driver at the end so they can kind of weed out the bad ones, mm-hmm. right? If, you have a, if everybody has a bad experience with a certain driver, you can weed them out that way. And it charges your card. You know, there's no worry about tipping or anything like that. You can follow on the map where you're going to see if it's actually taking you in the right place. And, you know, honestly, these guys are pros. I mean, the, 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 the cars are nice. The drivers are friendly. And it's, it's only been a positive experience for me. But it's interesting because, you know, we're talking about an app, really. It's more of an app. It's more of a service than an app. And, mm-hmm. and it's, it's kind of a loaded thing. In San Francisco, it's become so popular with, the, with us techie nerd travelers, right, that, that um, the, the taxi commission are freaking out about it <laughs> and uh, are actually trying to sue or attack Uber in legal ways because they're saying that Uber is bypassing all of the regulations around taxi mm. uh, oh, and limousine yeah. services, yep. right? I'm not sure what the details are. You guys can dig this out on Google. But if you if you look around, there's a lot of controversy about it right well, now. Well, it's, it's, it's disruptive, and that's what's going to well, happen when dis- something's disruptive exactly. like that. Right? Yeah. It's kind of like the hotels with Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it is a, it's the ultimate in disruptive technology. And, I mean, the app in itself is not, you know, it's certainly, you know, it's a good app. It's fine. It gets the job done. I'm sure that uh, it's, like, it's no Instagram in the sense of, like, the, the UI design and the quality of the, 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 the app itself. But it's the whole experience that's quality. And, and you certainly do pay a premium. I think it um, actually is probably not the best to use Uber for a very short trip. Uh, it gets pretty expensive compared to a cab. But I think for things like the airport, if you really have to go across town, oh, yeah. Yeah. And you're with a couple more people and or it's a business lunch or dinner and you know you can kind of like tax write it off or whatever, um, you it, know, why not? Right? It, te- it, tends, it tends to average about a third more expensive than a cab, at least in San Francisco. Um, yeah, but- you know, so it's, it's about a third to a half to it's about thirty percent to about fifty percent more than a cab. Yeah. Um, but that flat rate to the airport, I mean, I much rather would. You know, it's about for me, it's about forty five bucks to go from my airport. Uh, for, go from my house to the airport in a cab, yeah, and it's too. sixty bucks flat with Uber. Correct. You, you go in a exactly little, is. little more nicer. You can relax. You get water. You get water. They have water yeah. bottles. Oh, cool. <laughs> and, and you know, they really, they you don't have to like go to the cab line, wait yes. for the cab. They just pick yeah. you up and they drop yeah. you off. And you know, it's yeah. I mean, it really has changed everything for me. And um, it's helped me in New York City because there, were, I because I was in New York City once day and on Long Island, and I missed the train, the Long Island Railroad train at two in the morning, and the next train wasn't an hour and a half away, so I called Uber. And I'm like, you drive to Long Island? They're like, sure. And yes, I ended up paying for it, but yeah, I got but me home. Got, right? got exactly. What yeah. about rush hour? I'm kind of curious for those that have used it, you know, because <clears throat> especially in San Francisco, rush hour is like, you know, you can't get a cab. I mean, you yeah. just can't get one. Yeah. Uh, dinner time, you just can't get a cab. So have you tried it like around oh, dinner time? Is it work? Tried it in dinner time in the rain. Really? Yeah. And, It'll and tell you if there's tell you no, yeah. um, oh, cool. if there's no cabs or no Ubers available and then, yeah. or the, and how long it will take if you, you know. And you, you can, need to. and you can do what I've adopted, which is the Uber Murphy's Law rule, which is the moment <laughs> I hit request the car and then a, a car says, okay, a car's coming. It's eight minutes away. A cab will drive by. Of and course. I just flag the cab, cancel the Uber and get in the cab. Oh, <laughs> my God. It's, it, it happens every time. It's just Murphy's Law. It's amazing. Yeah, so. Wow. All right. So, you know, cool. I mean, it's a service more than an app. I mean, the app is, you know, kind of a peripheral thing, really, to yeah. the whole experience. But it's it's there. It's for Android for and for other platforms as well. So check it out. Thank you so much, Miriam. It's good. It's it's a really great service. Aaron, uh, bringing up the rear. All right. Last but not least, uh, there's not a whole lot to show here, but this is a really cool app. Um uh, it, I will say right away, you have to have a rooted phone for this. 
Okay. Oh, okay. okay so it's root, root, root only. We need like some sort of root alarm. Yeah, or something. right. Like, root, like, root, spoiler root, alert. Root, root, yeah. root <laughs> alarm. Like a like a like a gavel. Yes. Root. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Chad, can you work on that? Get some sort of root graphic. <laughs> Root. <laughs> Root. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the app is Samba File Sharing, and you can go find that um, in the uh, market or the Play Store, whatever they're calling it these days. Um, but it, it is basically what it is. So I don't know if you guys know what Samba is. I'm assuming you do. I think for it's those a great that, dance. Yeah. yeah, it is a great <laughs> dance. That's true. Uh, it's like dancing with the stars. Yeah, if, for it. those of you who are not fully aware of what Samba is, it's basically Windows networking. Um, it's, an, it's a Windows file share like you would do on your Windows PC. Uh, but the open source version is called Samba. That's the, what the project's called. So this basically enables you to have a Windows-compatible file share on your phone that's viewable from any of your Windows PCs on your network. So you got to be rooted to get this installed. But once you do, you also have to have a super user running, um, which is the app that um, – uh, if you if you're root, you probably have super user. It pretty much comes with the package, um, but it enables the phone to run in super user mode, or excuse me, enables the app to run in super user mode. So once you get this up and running, uh, all you have to do is launch it. There's a few settings that you have to do, obviously, when you configure a network share. But then basically, you never have to plug in your phone again. Uh, uh, when you want to just transfer files back and forth to your phone. So you can leave your phone in your pocket. That's it nice. automatically comes on when it when you go to, uh, you can set it so that when you connect to a Wi-Fi network, it'll automatically start. And then when you leave, it'll automatically stop. So you walk into your house, for example, you connect to your Wi-Fi, it's on. Um, and it's really quick when you open up the app, actually, you can uh, click on the uh, little Samba file share um, logo and that'll actually turn it off or on so it'll enable it or dis- disable it depending on what you uh, depending on what state you're in so if you want to turn it off and on sometimes I have to turn it off and on to get it working most of the time it works just fine um, and then when it comes up it'll actually let you know what the IP address is and uh, it's coming back up it says it's enabled and running it tells you what your share is if you go into settings you can actually change some of the um, your password your username the work group name if you're on a work network that has a you know funky uh, 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 work group name or what your net BIOS name is. So that's what comes up when you're browsing around your windows machine or, or whatever you can see that. So that's pretty much it. I mean, that's, that's all it does. And it's, it's pretty easy, pretty simple, but it really is a big time saver. Um, especially if you're used to connecting your cable up to transfer files, you don't have to do that anymore. You just come in, it works and you transfer files back and forth. Especially useful for me, like for photos, if I've been taking a bunch of photos and I want to just transfer them off to my PC, all I have to do is, you know, I don't have to do anything with my phone. It's in my pocket. I just go to my uh, desktop machine, transfer all those files where I need them, and I'm done. So, Very cool. So that's called <laughs> Samba File Sharing, and it's free for rooted phones on the Google Play Store. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of uh, the, All About Android. What about the arena voting? Oh, right. Sorry. Yes, the poll. I'm about ready to close this out, but you know you what? Are. There's a poll. And if you go to bit.ly slash poll 60 triple A, you'll see the poll. Chad, will you show and reveal the poll? All right. Some people are voting already. Uh, and there we go. We're off to the races for episode and 60. There goes AirDroid running out <laughs> at the gate. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens an hour before the show on Monday. <laughs> Who's going to suddenly come up from behind? It's yep. like, oh, it, you know, it's it's how you finish, people. Yep, exactly. no, I'm going to close the voting at four. So uh, four which, Pacific. Which I think is fair. Yeah. I concede. I agree. <laughs> Let it be known. Uh, all right. So that is it for our uh, show. Let us, I want to thank Miriam so much for hanging out and for joining us after your whirlwind trip to Nolens. Nolens. Thanks uh, for having me on. Did you have the uh, chicory coffee and the beignets? Uh, the beignets and coffee, absolutely. It's a, a must have if you're ever in New Orleans. Yes. And Miriam, uh, just for those uh, folks out there, uh, where could they find you? Um, so I'm the senior mobile editor at Engadget. Uh, you can find me at Engadget.com where I do reviews and uh, occasional news articles and I travel for trade shows, but I'm generally around there. So hope, come visit. Great. And on Twitter? T- I'm at, yeah, at TNKGRL. It's, T, it's like Tank Girl without the vowels. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's easy to remember. 
Very cool. Well, thank you once again for hanging out uh, on this episode and uh, for filling us in on all the uh, goodies at CTIA. Aaron Newcomb, thank you very much for filling in for Mr. Howell one more time. Anytime. And, Always uh, glad to come over. Let everybody know uh, where they can find you if they want to find more of Aaron. Right. Well, first of all, right here on the Twit Network, you can go over to Floss Weekly. Uh, which is a show about open source software projects. So you can uh, go there, and I'm a, a co-host on that show. And you can basically follow me anywhere at Aaron Newcomb. So Twitter, Facebook, especially Google+. Plus. That's where I hang out mm. these days. I spend most of my time there. So if you're on Google+, Plus, uh, add me to your circles. If you're not on Google+, Plus, get on Google+, Plus and then add me to your circles. <laughs> uh, and you can follow all kinds of things that I like to talk about, open source, making, hacking, and, of course, Android. Awesome. Yep. Very Ron. Cool. As always, you can find everything me at about.me slash ronxo, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, all the stuff. I, I fanboy graphically my day jobs. They're all there. Just <laughs> go click through and check them all out. Thank you for watching. Yay. And same for me. Go to about.me slash Eileen Rose and you can see everywhere you can find me. I'm on the internets a lot. So uh, let's come hang out. Yeah. No, kidding. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Jason Howell will be back next week. And uh, Jason fans, you'll, you'll, you will rejoice the uh, long we, wait is over. I know. We knew. <laughs> we warned you. It's going to be three missed, episodes. Missed that guy. You've been listening, I bet, to our episodes. Uh. Hey, Jason. Uh, we missed you. Uh, but that's it for this week. Don't uh, Just a reminder, voicemail. Send us a voicemail, 347-SHOW, triple A. You can also send us email and video mail at AAA at twit.tv. Our Twitter handle is at Android Show. And you can also find all our show notes and ways to subscribe to this show. Download this show at twit.tv slash AAA. We'll be back. We're here. Around uh, 5, 5.30 Pacific every Monday at live.twit.tv. Until next time, have a good week. So long. This song just makes me want to like float swim away. And float away. Float away. <laughs> like the icon on my app, AirDroid. Like a paper oh, there you plane. go.